everyone, I'm Katie, author of Outsider Chronicles, and today I'm going to be reviewing Melabeth. It's This is book two in the Melabeth the Vampire series. It comes with Nifty Bookmark. Um, this one is called Forgive Me For I Am Sin. This is actually the old cover. There's a new cover that you can see in about... The new cover is really gorgeous, but you know, there's something to be said about having, you know, like original first collector's edition things and stuff like that. It's fun. So, since this is a sequel, it starts off um, pretty much right after the first book left off, which by the way, there will be spoilers in this review. And if you haven't read the book, I suggest going to port and buy it. And then um, you can watch my first review of Malibeth the Vampire, the first book. Spoiler alert. Anyway, so in this book, um, Malbeth and David, they're finally in Las Vegas, the, the city of vampires pretty much, and um, they are still bent on getting revenge, especially with what happened in book two, I mean, actually, especially with what happened in book one, where um, well, David's family got killed, and David's family were killed by the same people who tortured and killed Malbeth 15 years ago. Which also you should know that um, this book is set in 1990, so 15 years ago is like 1975. My math is bad. 1975, and so it's set in the olden days, but there's it's modern day to them because you know they're living it. Anyway, <clears throat> so in book two, um, since it deals with the theme of revenge and how and forgiveness and how it affects people and stuff like that, in book two, Mel's plans for revenge are kind of starting to affect her in a bad way. And you know, especially with her relationships with people and how she deals with what happened to her herself and everything like that. Um, to expect, and, and David kind of gets drawn to that too, and so you see kind of like the negative aspects of revenge, where actually they kind of become unlikable. But I like that he, ex um, E.B. explored that aspect because, like in, um, say they have a revenge movie, and you know this is the guy something happens to his wife or his daughter or some female companion in his life, and so now he's a bit on revenge. And which is justified and you know they in the movie they're you're supposed to be rooting for the guy as he goes through the binge product on um, product whatever he does to um anybody else in the movie excuse me because well it's revenge he's supposed to get justice in his own way and everything like that um even if there's like something happens to innocent people you know like in the car crashes when they go um the car chases when they go through the i don't know some third world country market and things get crashed and they run into the food carts and you know there's some innocent bystanders that got run over but you know we're not supposed to care about that because you know the revenge is more important than the extras so <clears throat> i'm really glad that he um he explored that in the book i won't tell you what happened but it does touch on what i just said before i also re i really like the more nuanced re approach about you know revenge and forgiveness and all that um, the book two goes by at a really fast pace um what's it called the middle part was a little hectic so i wasn't really sure what was going on but that's mostly kind of like um mel's conflict in herself so it reflects that on the page because sometimes i'm like okay what happened here what happened there but you know it all ties together towards what's happening towards the end and also um, gives you a peek at what might be happening in the third book. I also liked how in the book, um, whenever Melbeth says revenge or thinks about getting revenge, it's an all caps letter. So whenever I read it, I always went revenge. And it actually kind of made me laugh. It was funny. Um, but not in the bad way. It just, it was just like she's really focused on revenge and beginning to consume her, which also reflects about what's going on in the book. So I really like how he taught uh, E.B. tied the um, themes of revenge and forgiveness. He's like, he's like, he really thought it out and everything like that. Yeah. So I enjoyed it. Um, it's both both the same as um book one, um, uh, but there's a twist at the end which is shocking, and you're like, okay, what is going to happen in book three? Like, how is everything going to get tied together? Also, in the book, you learn some stuff about uh, Mel that like. Cause she's a vampire but she does some stuff that vampires can't do so you're trying to figure out okay what why is she kind of like more than a vampire but when you find out you're like oh and so <clears throat> it was clever uh, but it also can backfire on her if she's so focused on revenge so there's the deal um the theme of revenge the theme of revenge is really heavy in book two the less so in book one is more like the setup 
of revenge and you know of course it's justified it's more like it's more like a vigilante movie in the first book and the second book is more like the consequences of being a vigilante in the and I guess in the third book I guess it's going to be on her path to forgiveness and healing herself and stuff like that I don't know but I can't wait to read it yeah so anyway be sure to check out my book Nico Harmon Outsider book one two and three of the Outsider Chronicles links to all that and the review of book one of Melabeth the Vampire is down below bye